there's been no video for a while so here you get a video today I've been uh, I haven't been doing anything on the cars I have been driving this but um, you know nothing noteworthy of putting videos up I've been getting the yard and gardens ready for winter you know at the end of the season here and I did put up the C9 Christmas lights on the garage and in the tree just in the backyard I haven't put them up out front yet put the patio furniture away and started uh, and cleaned the gardens out and had a ton of leaves to clean up and we went from summer like weather to where I was riding the motorcycle two days ago to winter overnight it's only in the like 31 or 32 out now but yeah this the last time I rode it, it started hard cold and it started hot, hard hot. And uh, I came home and cleaned the points. And then it was starting first kick again. So I ordered a new set of points for it. Never really done anything to it since I restored it. And I think the gas was a little gummed up because it really hadn't been ridden much in about four years. And this year, I've so far I've burned six tanks of gas through it. Put about 600 and. 50 miles or so on it so far so I did get a carb kit for it also though I don't think I'm gonna need to rebuild it I'll show you what I got. that's the carb kit for the XL 175 and when I originally restored the bike all I replaced was a needle seat and float in this bottom gasket and I couldn't find this one and it was all hard and I just reused it but anyway if it uh, gives me any problems with starting We'll do the carb too. So I ordered, like I say, I ordered points and condenser for it. And I have the carb kit. So if I need to rebuild that, I can too. I doubt I'll do videos on it. I'm going to be taking this back to my brother's probably next week to store for the winter now that the weather has turned fall. But anyway, on what this video is about. So if you watch my videos regularly, you know I put a dash cam in the Bel Air. This is a Viafo. A229 and I did it on a uh, they sent it out to me if I do a video on installing it and using it so I installed it in this car and I really like the way it sits up there out of the way above the mirror kind of you don't really see it from outside unless it's out in the day in the Sun and uh, so I, I just kind of I enjoy having it there when I'm out driving everything's recorded so if I want to sneak a clip off of it for you guys I can but um I kind of want one in the truck too I contacted the the gal that I dealt with for the one the sponsored one in the Chevy and I got a one for the truck now so this is a T30 this one's a little different obviously it doesn't have the screen and uh it's it's got an inside camera too that's the front outside that's the inside camera and the rear camera and I got the polarizing lens for the front camera and I got a 128 uh, gigabyte memory card for the camera the, the, the one in this car came with the 64 and they rewrite over once the cards full well I ordered a I think it's a five it's the largest one that they'll accommodate I think it's a 512 and uh, I think that's what it is and it's an extreme something it, you got to get the ones that really take a licking and keep on recording and uh, so anyway that's in this car so i will have you know 20 hours of video or so on it but anyway I also got the hard wire kit for the truck also this is the one that I that's one in the Bel Air and like I say this is one here now this one's just some slight differences in it and some of the slight differences you guys might be interested so I'll show you so on the camera in the Bel Air that camera right there the wiring from the camera rear camera to the dash or to the head unit on the windshield this is the wire that 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 uh, A229 uses it. You can see how small it is, the connectors there. And this is the wiring for this camera, and you can see how much bigger it is. Look at the difference in the size of that 
that's significant. And even the connector size. Look at the how much smaller that connector is compared to this connector. So, so the that makes for a much cleaner installation than this camera does. But this is the truck, so it doesn't really bother me that it's going to be a little bit uh, thicker and beefier cable here and the cable in for the rear camera there. So I just kind of wanted to point that out. So if you're looking for something like in a, if you want to put a camera in your classic car, get the newer, you know, get this, this version right here. And you will have this lighter cable to run to the wiring. I wish the power cables were light like this too. Power cables are about this size right here. But eventually I think they'll come down in size. And I've done a lot of research on dash cams since I got that one. I even did research on this one before I got it just to make sure it was a good camera. And I'm actually really super happy with it. I couldn't be happier. I think it's a great product. So that's why I opted to get this one for the truck. And um, I'm going to install it. I'm not going to do a lot of video on installing it because I did video on installing that one and they're going to install basically the same way other than this one. It has just a little thicker cable to run, which is no big deal on the truck. And this is a little gadget they give you to pull trim off and stuff cable and then stuff. So, all right, well, let me get to starting to install this. I'm going to have to measure between the windows, get center. I want the center camera that centered. I want this centered on the windshield. This is going to be a little lower. Than the, I'm not going to put this one up above. The, well, I can't. There's this this grid here on the F-150. That's proprietary to Ford where it says F-150. I had to have the windshield replaced in this truck and the insurance company was just going to put a regular windshield without this on it. I'm like, wait a minute, I paid for that when I bought the truck. I had spec that back in it. I had to take it to the Ford dealer to have the glass put in it and fight with the insurance company to get that put in, which this truck came with new. But I'm thinking of Maybe mounting the camera like somewhere right here in this area. You can turn it. See how you can turn it. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. And then this front lens you can move. And this lens you can move too. So if you want to point a little more over that way. If you get pulled over or something. You want to record the conversation. You can. So anyway that's kind of what I'm thinking. So let me uh, start running wires and marking things out. That's how I mounted the camera and I ran the wiring up through. There's a hole here where the wiring would have went for the mirror. This truck doesn't have a ton of options. When I ordered or when I bought this truck, I told the salesman what I wanted was a V8, small V8, automatic transmission. That was a must and cruise control. Those are three of the absolute must-haves. And, uh, you know, it's got a halfway decent stereo CD, and it's got delay wipers. It's got a lot of stuff. It didn't have power windows or locks. It had crank windows, so I added power windows and power locks. It locks that door when you unlock them and unlocks both. But anyway, I'm running the so I ran the wire from the rear camera up under the edge there and around the trim. I didn't have to take any of that down. This little tool right here did the job in getting the wiring all in there. I did take this plastic bezel off to get the wiring under there and get it to here. And then obviously I took this A-pillar plastic trim off so I can run the wiring down the excess camera wiring and the power wiring so I'm wiring this up so the parking feature works you know so I got a the fuse panel I got to get the glove box out but it's in behind all this stuff here where I got to run the wiring to power it up probably power it the permanent power will probably be where the windows and power windows and locks are and the keyed power I'll have to get my test light out and figure out a terminal for that and uh, we'll get everything fused up too obviously so let me uh finish running the wiring here i'll pull a glove box out and 
basically just run the wiring. I can put the pillar on, hook the wiring up, and we're done. I haven't been working on this for very long at all, but yeah, that's where I kind of held the camera up there with it powered up and watching it on my phone to make sure, you know, I don't get the back of the mirror here and that, you know, I get good interior view. I tilted the camera a little that way. You can move the camera and I just tilted it that way. So it gets the side window over there a little bit and this uh, lens is aimed, you know, about right too. So I, after I powered it up and I measured from the stuff here this, this that thing down put a piece of tape i held it up where i wanted it measured to the base of this and then i measured in several places and put tape across there so it wouldn't be cockeyed you know because the mirror kind of you know it's not exactly it's not straight so i wanted the camera straight on the windshield so that is straight on the windshield and uh because like i say i put a piece of tape crossed here and then just stuck it up there to line up with the tape and that's i centered the camera the whole assembly as opposed to the lens i just think it looks a little neater that when i centered the lens to the center of the truck i was going to center the lens to the center of the truck this but i like the look of it better like that all right let me get the wiring hooked up and then we'll go out for a drive and see how it works Hopefully you can see in here, this little red wire here is 12 volts all the time, and that goes to the power door locks, which is uh, fused right there. And then the fuse for the power windows is right there. So I'm going to put a fuse in this red lead for the camera and just cut that connector off and put a new one on it with two wires coming out. So I have battery, 12 volt battery fused on this and then I got to find a keyed 12 volts for this so let me get this hooked up and then I'll go around and probe with my test light and find uh, probably the radio or something like that I'll find a spot to where I can put that and uh, yeah you can kind of see all the wiring in there the glove box comes out and you can access there's just two two screws that hold the the glove box on one there and the one over there where that hole is and then that just drops right out so it's easy access and then this panel pulls out to get to your fuse location here the system is all installed and working and kind of see how I maybe hopefully you can can say but the wire yeah it runs up around I took the sun visor out so I could pull a headliner down, run it down. You saw the A-pillar plastic was off. I had to take this plastic off too because I needed a keyed ignition source. And I didn't want to tap into anything that's for controls on the vehicle. And I found the wire, the dark blue with the light green tracers. The run position of the ignition switch that goes into the fuse panel and it shows in the wiring diagram going straight from the switch to the fuse panel and i put my test light on it and it was powered run so that's how that it took me more time to figure out a connection for the keyed power than anything i had everything else hooked up everything attached i even put this button here this used to have a uh, Cirrus radio in it and I don't have it so I just where this thing was for the Cirrus I put the button there so I can push that and it'll save the file if I want to and I have that one set on two minute files I have that one set on five minute files and I think I'm going to leave that one on five minute files so if I go to take them off for you guys or something, you know, it's not joining a bunch of files together. This one is more for my own personal use than for making you guys videos. But we'll take it out for a drive here in a minute and show you how it works. You can see the rear camera. I ran all the wiring, like I said, through there. And there is the rear camera. All right, let me... Uh, Get the lights turned off in the garage and we'll 
crank the truck up, I'll show you that work and we'll go for a ride. These are the shop manuals. This is the one that I was using the wearing schematics out of. It's nice when you have the proper manuals so you can find what you need. And then it has the other two volumes. So that's the shop manuals for the 2008 F-150. One thing you're going to notice between the camera and the Bel Air and the truck on the night vision, the truck is much better because the windshield isn't like deeply shaded like it is on the Bel Air. I mean, you can't even hardly see the camera through the glass, but I don't drive this car much at night. So during the daytime, I opened the aperture up on it. Daytime videos are fine. The nighttime videos are actually good too, but they're definitely better on this camera because it doesn't have that extreme dark tinting that the truck has. You can see how dark that tint is. Pretty darn dark. So I just wanted to kind of point that out if you comment that, yeah, this has better night. I think that's all because of the dark tinting on this car. I took the truck out. I had to go to the east side of the area to do some work-related stuff. And so I'll upload some video from the camera and from maybe even 696 and stuff in the so you'll see daylight and dark video nighttime video and interior video and uh, with the infrared too which is black and white the infrared when it goes to that but anyway here's that video all right we'll give it a start And there we go. All set to go. Let's go for a ride and see how it works. And I'll maybe pull the memory card out so you guys can uh, see some of the video from it. Let's go for a ride.
Well, I'm going to end the video here. So if you liked it, definitely hit the like button. It helps. If you like my channel, you can subscribe by hitting that 348 engine icon there. Pops up. And thank you for watching my video.